Welcome to CCIEerDie.com. I'm Artek, and this is CCNP Switch 300-115 2.1A DHCP Snooping. In this segment, we'll cover DHCP as well as DHCP Snooping. It seems the blueprint is remiss in mentioning DHCP in its own line item, so we'll briefly cover it here as you cannot have DHCP Snooping without DHCP. DHCP is easy enough. There are only two requirements for it so long as you're using a single subnet, as we'll do here for the sake of simplicity. The minimum requirements call for a default router and a DHCP network for address assignment. You could establish a lease period, DNS, and many other delimiters, but they're not the minimum requirements. It's a good idea also to include a domain name, but usually that's already been configured. DHCP is the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. It eases administration by allowing clients to broadcast for IP addresses and a default gateway, among other parameters. It's a lot easier than statically configuring a bunch of Windows or Linux boxes in any size environment. The usual method is for a dedicated server to handle the chore, but Cisco was kind enough to include it in its routers and switches, and of course, on its exams. So the first step will be to set up a DHCP server. Keep in mind the acronym DORA, DIS OFF REC ACK, and you can easily memorize the DHCP process. Discover, Offer, Request, Acknowledge. Option 82, or the information option, is a player in the viral canvas. Option 82 is turned on by default and does further fact checking for validity on untrusted ports, especially in the case of relays. We can avoid this altogether by turning off option 82 at the switch or by enabling option 82 on the access ports, the untrusted ports. However, here we're going to turn it off on the switch. You can find out a lot more detail about option 82 on the internet. In fact, Peter Lapukov has a great article about it on his INE blog. Just do a search for option 82 Peter and that should be your first hit. And and here it is. It's a it's a great article and I I definitely would 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 read it if I were you. So let's get down to the configuration. Here we have our simple topology, a DHCP server or switch and switch 1 connecting our PCs 1 and 2, which are Linux servers here in the viral environment. And we'll first start off by opening our terminal multiplexer and doing some common things between the DHCP server and the switch. First, we'll go to config T. Let's make sure that our players are both playing. Good. And the first thing I want to do is set, first we'll do show CDP and we'll see that the timer by default is set for 60 seconds. That is way too long for my taste. So we'll set the CDP timer for five. Also, interface gig 00, which is the, the device management interface for our, our viral, our viral uh, devices, I like to turn off. So interface gig 0 slash 0. And we'll shut that because I don't like to see it in my output of CDP and we set that off we'll double check switch one to make sure yeah switch one has got it as well and we'll establish uh, VLANs between the two switches so VLAN 10 and 69 good and then we'll exit to write those to the VLAN database excellent just double check on switch one. Very good. And we'll establish the trunk between the DHCP server and our switch one. Interface gig zero slash one. Switch port trunk end cap dot one Q. Switch port mode trunk. And we're only going to allow VLANs 10 and 69, 69 for our control traffic. That's CDP using the multicast address 01000C, CC, CC, CC. VTP also uses that same multicast address for its control traffic. We want that to pass on the native VLAN 69. We don't want to pass any data traffic on the native VLAN. We just want to pass our data traffic on VLAN 10. So we have that set up. So switch port trunk native vlan 10 and switch port trunk allowed vlan 10 and 69 and let's double check 
we'll turn off the multiplexer now because we're going to do everything else individually and we'll make this bigger we're familiar with the topology by now so we're on the DHCP server do show interface trunk notice our native v our native VLAN should be 69 we'll go back to that interface gig 0 slash 1 switch port trunk native VLAN 69 and now we'll double check them again do show interface trunk that one's 69 notice it here and on our switch one do show interface trunk and that one's 69 so they agree we won't get any nasty CDP complaints now for our interface VLAN 10 we're going to give it an IP address IP address 192.168.10.1 notice the the subnet follows the VLAN 255.255.255.0 that is a good practice no shut and now on switch one interface VLAN 10 setting up the SVI IP address 192.168.10.2 255.255.255.0 no shut and we'll give VLAN 10 a second to come up and there it is and do ping 192.168.10.1 to prove connectivity good now we'll go back to the DHCP server and set up DHCP. IP DHCP pool, we'll call it DHCP. We'll set up the default router. Notice that we're in DHCP configuration mode. We'll call this 192.168.10.1. And we'll set up the network 192.168.10.0255.255.255.0. And further, we'll exclude IP DHCP, exclude 192.168.10.1, and we'll exclude two. Good. So DHCP should be all set up. Now, before we get to option 82, we're going to go back to, to switch one and we're going to uh, finish setting that up. Interface range gig zero slash two to three. Two to three. Switch port mode access for our PCs. Switch port access VLAN 10. And that should be good to go. We'll do show interface status. Do a quick check. Good. Do show VLAN brief. Another good way to check. Excellent. So they, they should be they should be good to go. Now before we set up DHCP snooping or be, before we allow DHCP to bind. Uh, addresses to the PCs we're gonna set up DHCP snooping and the reason for that is I find that with viral uh, it's an order of operation thing if the DHCP server hands out the IP addresses they bind better or more readily with 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 the switch so let's talk a bit about about DHCP snooping DHCP snooping is designed to disallow rogue DHCP servers from inhabiting your network and dishing out false IP addresses and gateways to your clients. This is performed by establishing a trust between authorized devices and thereby building a reference database for cross-checking. Remember, only untrusted connections will be leased IP addresses and assigned to the, to the snooping database along with the associated Macs and VLANs. It is vital to understand that trusted connections are established between server and switch or router and switch or switch and switch, not switch and access ports. The three essential items 
to get DHCP snoop, snooping operational are turn on DHCP snooping, turn on DHCP snooping for the VLANs uh, or VLANs, and establish trust between the server and the switch. So let's turn it on. IP DHCP snooping to launch it. Exit IP DHCP snooping. There it is. Now we'll we'll verify. Do show IP DHCP snoop. And we know we don't have a trusted port yet. We're getting to that. So now we need to turn it on globally for the VLAN in question, which is VLAN 10. IP DHCP snooping for VLAN 10. Great. And now the trusted port is going to be gigs uh, uh, 0 slash 1 between our two, our two devices. So interface gig 0 slash 1. IP DHCP snooping trust. And those are our requirements for building our DHCP snooping uh, database. Of course, we haven't gotten to the clients yet, and we're going to get to them right now. Again, we haven't got option 82 turned off yet, but we're going to get to that. So first, we're going to sudo DH client minus R to make sure that that viral didn't give us an address for Ethernet 1. And on DHCP, the DHCP server, we're going to end and we're going to debug IP DHCP server packet because I like to see the action. We notice that the debugging is on. And back to PC1. So we've cleared it of any address that it might have on Ethernet 1. And we're going to do sudo DH client for Ethernet 1. And notice it's going to hang. And we go to DHCP, and it's it's going to complain. Notice the gateway address is zero. So we need to turn off option 82 on our switch. So exit and no IP DHCP snooping information option or option 82 information option and our PC should now get a hit. Let's see. It's still claiming it's zero. So let's go back to the PC. Oh, I think it. I think it took. And there it is. Notice it's got 10.3. And we'll do the same thing for PC2. Sudo dh client minus r. And the, the default password for the Linux boxes on viral is Cisco, Cisco, well, the ID and password Cisco, Cisco. And now sudo dh client for Ethernet 1. And we should get a hit here shortly. And there it is. Let's look at the DHCP server. And that one got 10.4. So from the DHCP server, let's, let's you all first, you all, to turn off all possible debugging. And we're going to ping. 192.168.10.3, good, and four. We've established connectivity. Now show IP DHCP bind, and that's good to go. Now when we go back to switch one, we should be able to look at our IP DHCP snooping binding database. So let's show IP DHCP snoop bind and there you have it both of them are bound and notice as the MAC address and the, the VLAN that is that they're both assigned to this is going to to come in handy especially when you start using dynamic ARP inspection with IP ARP inspection uh, as well as IP source guard so that's it on DHCP snooping. We notice that we have a trust established between our, our two devices and our PCs uh, have their, their DHCP addresses. And we also have our bindings for, for future reference. Thanks for watching.